So, we are coming up to mid-April now, and we still haven't had any new iPads since the end of 2022. We had Mark Gurman telling us that new iPad Airs, iPad Pros, and MacBook Airs were going to be coming out in March time in 2024. And then after that, this got delayed out to the sort of end of March time, early April time, for the iPad Pros and the iPad Air. And then finally, now we've been told we're not going to be getting them until May time. Now, it's not often that I say this, but what the f*** is going on? Well, let's try to get to the bottom of this and let's see why the iPad Pros and the iPad Airs are being delayed so much this year. Now, believe it or not, the last time we had iPads come out was the end of 2022. What is about 18 months ago? We got the current M2 iPad Pro and also the 10th generation iPad. And then in 2003, we got no iPads at all. Now, to be fair, as you can see right here, Mark Gurman did actually get that information correct. We didn't actually get any new iPads in the year of 2023. And this is the first time we've had no new iPads in a year ever since the launch of the first iPad back in 2010. But like I said at the beginning of this video, we were expecting brand new iPads to come along with, say, those MacBook Airs at the start of March time, but they never came with them. And like I've also pointed out already, we were meant to get them at the end of March time, beginning of April time, and then they were suddenly delayed out till May time. Now, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear the reasons why the iPad Pro has been delayed, Mark Gurman has actually told us the time of when we'll be getting the iPad Pros sort of into our hands and when the launch sort of time will be. As you can see right here, he has actually said it's going to be in the first full week of May time. So for me, if I was looking at my calendar, like I've got right here, I'm going to say probably we're going to get an event on sort of May 6th or May 7th, and then probably they're going to be in our hands at the end of that week on May 10th. That's when we can actually physically get our hands on these brand new iPad Airs and iPad Pros. And hey, I've just realized something. Looking at this, that's near my birthday as well. Maybe I'll treat myself to a brand new iPad Pro. But like I said, it won't be specific that we'll be getting just the iPad Pros at this time. We will also be getting the brand new iPad Airs and we will get the iPad Airs with that 10.9 inch display that we've had before but we will also be getting a brand new ipad air was going to be a 12.9 inch model and both of these ipads will come with an m2 chipset inside of them but to be fair by then you may as well just buy yourself say an ipad pro with an m2 chipset in it the 11 inch or even the 12.9 inch model because you know by that time they've been out for 18 months you buy it at a refurbished cost it's probably going to cost about the same cost as an ipad a 11 inch or you know the 13 12.9 inch model or maybe it might be slightly more but you'll get far more features in it and to be deadly honest as you can hear by my ramble yeah i'm going to be making a video about that because really i don't see much point in getting yourself an ipad air because you'll be able to probably get the ipad pro with an m2 inside it for around about the same price but refurbished but moving on why the delay to may time well, it looks like it's a mix between software related and hardware related problems. Well, let's start then first of all with the hardware related problems and that's all to do with the actual screens of these new iPads. Now, if you didn't know already, the new iPads are expected to get OLED displays put inside them for the first time. This is the first time we've had an iPad with an OLED display. And also what makes it different is that both the models, the 11 inch and also the new 13 inch model are both gonna have this instead of like last time where we just got the mini LED display exclusive for the 12.9 inch model. But in any case, looking at this report right here, we can see that Samsung were making the 13 inch OLED display and also they were making the 11 inch iPad Pro 2 but there were problems with manufacturing the amount of 11 inch iPad Pros for demand from Samsung what Apple needed for the actual release so an alternative was needed so Apple have actually gone to LG to make their OLED display so we've got the 13 inch models being made by Samsung and we actually got the 11 inch models being made by LG instead now, what I will say at this stage, before you get scared and going, oh my gosh, you know, I'm a big Samsung fan in screens or a big LG fan in screen technology, don't worry, both of these screens will be basically identical 
identical in how they look. Just like any other company out there, Apple have their standards and how good a screen must be. And it has to be a certain amount of brightness, must have a certain amount of color depth and all of this sort of good stuff. And they will be doing vigorous tests to make sure it's exactly the same for both the panels. So there probably won't be any differences between the 11 inch and also the 13 inch, no matter which one you pick. So don't worry there, you will get the same type of display no matter what size model you'll pick. And you're gonna pick one when it releases. So then guys, just quickly, I want to talk about the brand new Charge, Charge Geek 170. And it's this mega power bag, what is really, really awesome in its looks. It has this amazing transparent design I absolutely love. And it's also got this prism sort of silhouette kind of look too. And it actually got its inspiration from Dark Side of the Moon for this actual look. What is really, really awesome. I absolutely love it. But not only this though, this power bag has a lot of amazing features built into it too. As you can see right now, I'm charging up my iPhone 15 Pro Max with it. And you can actually monitor the actual charging of inputs and outputs on this digital screen here on the front and how many watts are going out to your devices. And when I say devices, I literally mean that. We've got two USB-C ports and we've also got a one times USB-A port too. So you can charge up three devices all in one go. This power bank also has a total of 170 watts of output out of these three ports, what can be shared around using PD3 technology. And also if your devices are compatible, they can benefit from fast charging for higher efficiency. Also, with just one USB-C port, like I'm doing right here, I can actually charge up, say, the likes of a brand new M3 MacBook Air. And in fact, if you've got the likes of, say, a 16-inch MacBook Pro, you're going to have no problems there because the maximum output on just one single USB-C port is 140 watts on just one port, what is incredible. And as you can see from the batteries in this design here, we've actually got 24,000 milliamp battery capacity inside of it. And if you want to check out this brand new Shard Geek 170 power bank right now, make sure you check out the links from Charge right now or in my actual description of this video below. And with that, it's back to the main video. Next though, you're probably wondering, well, what is Delay 2 all about? Well, like I said, it's all to do with software related problems. And Mark Gurman has actually had his insight about this. As you can see right here, Mark Gurman even said that iPad OS 17.4, when it was in its beta stage, was that Apple needed to create a special edition of this iPad OS for the new iPad Pros that were coming up with the OLED displays. But as you know, we've got iPad OS 17.4 out now. It's in our hands. We can get it out of beta. So it looks like now it's going to be iPad OS 17.5, where we're actually going to be getting the actual edition that you get inside the box. And again, looking here at this report here, it looks like we've actually seen some code here in iPad OS 17.5 in the beta relating to a slightly larger iPad, what's probably going to be the 13 inch iPad Pro. So it's more than likely this is the version of software that's going to come out. And this is why, you know, we have had some delays here because Apple have had to change up their software a little bit and get it correct, ready for the version. Also, if you've seen previous reports in the past, Apple also now have a way of rolling out software updates, you know, in the factory and also into storage of devices, as you can see right here. So that's pretty cool that on the day of release, you will get the latest version of iPad OS on your new iPad. But the main thing I would say to take away from this video right now to do with all of these delays and everything is that yes, there has been software issues. Yes, there has been hardware issues, but they are on track now for a May release according to Mark Gurman but there again Mark Gurman has changed his mind quite a few times in the past but at the end of the day as WWDC is getting ever so closer Apple really have no choice but to roll out this iPad now or they have to delay it all the way to June time but I really hope that's not going to be the case I do have my bets that it's probably going to be in May time that we are going to see these new iPad Pros and also these new iPad Airs. 
But with that, guys, though, I would love to also know your thoughts on this iPad Pro delay or iPad Air delay. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's going to be worth the wait, waiting out a bit longer? Or do you think this could have been sorted out way in the past? Let me know your thoughts on that. And also, time, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, at the same time, you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons, please also make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time, guys, see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.